What's going on everyone? Welcome back to uh, Bazooka Kickboxing question and answer. Uh, I just want to say and start off this um, series by saying thank you for everyone. The comments you guys have been leaving have been amazing. Everything has been positive. All the thumbs up have been amazing. Um, it's making it motivating for me to want to continue to share this stuff. So again, thank you. The more you guys like, the more you guys comment and leave questions, the better this series is going to get. Uh, I'm also going to start off by apologizing. I am a little sick and I am a little stuffed up. So Hopefully, um, you guys can still understand me. Um, also, last question and answer, I did not win in the Tim Hortons Cup. I, I have not won at all, so Tim Hortons, if you're watching this video, um, start offering more free coffees, please. Um, all right, let's get to the question and answer. Um, first one from, I'm going to butcher some names here, um, Gillis Terhove. Hey, Joe, my coach says I should punch faster, and I was wondering if you know any drills or exercises for that. Um, one of the quick, quickest tips I'm going to give you, when punching, so many people think of the uh, flight path out, um, then they return slowly. So one of the quickest ways to improve your punching is to hit and pull the hand back as fast as you punch. Um, also, if you watch the last episode of the technical series, I talk about um, not over pushing your punch. Um, learning impact over push. So hit impact and back. So think of the return. Um, as soon as you hit impact, return the hand straight right back and that will automatically speed up your punches. Um, have some fun with it. Even you can sit on the bag, time, time your punches out, throw multiple punches and it helps. Uh, another quick tip is don't always have to fully extend. I know in my videos I always talk about full extension. Full extension is good for power, but in order to improve those punches, um, you can always keep um, less extension in your elbow. And again, the key is returning your punch as fast as it comes out. Second question, has anyone noticed how gnarly Joe's forearms are? Um, how do you build your forearms like that? Um, is it just with punching bag and over and over repetition? Uh, that's from Beckoning Oblivion. So um, I do a lot of strength and conditioning, and, and that's uh, one of my keys. I deadlift a lot. I do a lot of one-arm rowing, a lot of back work. And with my strength and conditioning, it does build the forearms. That's one of the keys for me when I talk about building armor in martial arts. You're only as strong as your armor is. You can be the most technical fighter, but if you don't have that um, body armor, I call it sh your shield has to be um, the strongest thing in war. So improving your armor always helps so that's why I get a lot of my guys to do a lot of work where we kick each other's legs we work on body hitting kicking each other's forearms goes missed a lot have some of your guys even with shin guards start with shin guards kicking your forearms that's your blocking that's your main shield so you need to make sure that's the strongest again deadlifts back work one arm rowing in your strength and conditioning program anything you're grabbing and pulling is going to activate your forearms um, that's how you strengthen them Good question. And they are gnarly forearms. Never heard that, but that's awesome. Um, hey, Joe, you, you had a lot of um, success fighting people with more experience than you. Um, in your opinion, what training should you focus on for less experienced fighters who are built to fight more experienced fighters? Um, Rico Ben Tanga, something like that. Tanga. Um, Fighting more experienced fighters comes from your mindset. You need to be mentally strong. You can't go in there thinking that your opponent is better than you. You can't give them too much respect. So the key to fighting someone with more experience, you have to mentally tell yourself you're better physically, you're better conditioned, you're better technically, and you have to have that confidence in your beliefs to go into the ring as the more experienced fighter. So when I fought all of those guys, I've always been an underdog in all of my fights. But I knew I was mentally stronger than my opponents. I knew I was tough. Um, I knew I had good coaching and a good team around me. And everybody around me is telling me um, I can win. And the first thing I used to do, and um, I'll give you an example of my glory debut. I fought Murat Derechi. I had seven professional fights. Um, and he had, I think I believe around 70 or 80 at that time. And he had a knockout ratio of like in the 80%. Um, of course, on paper, he should have beat me. I'm fighting him in his hometown. But as soon as I read that, when I got my contract from Glory, I looked at my coach and said, hey, can I beat him? My coach says, yeah, for sure you can. Right away, I knew I was going to win. And from that moment on, I prepared myself mentally in my training, in my life, in, in order to um, believe that. 
Um, you, you have to believe it here um, in order to, to be successful. So it all starts with your mind. Be mentally strong. Uh, Joe, would it be beneficial for an MMA fighter to also complete, compete in amateur boxing to develop true striking skills? Um, or should I just stick to MMA fights but with strong striking training? Um, I don't know if you guys um, watched my Joe Rogan experience. And I think one of the biggest problems in MMA right now is people have so many different coaches. So they don't really know um, what to follow. Um, if you look at an MMA, um, traditional MMA training, you are going to think you need a boxing coach, a kickboxing coach, an MMA coach, a wrestling coach, a jiu-jitsu coach, a strength and conditioning coach. So you have all these different coaches you telling you so much different, different information. So it's really hard when in battle time, when you have to react, when your natural abilities have to come out, you don't know, really know what to do because your boxing coach is telling you to stand sideways. Your kickboxing coach is telling you to stand square. Your MMA coach is telling you to stay low and keep your hips back. So you have so many different um, coaches telling you too many different things. It's very difficult. So if you have a good coach, your good coach should be able to uh, manipulate your training in order to incorporate all of it. Um, again, here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA, um, I focus on so many different things. I am that one coach that can put the whole training system together. So if you're lucky to have that coach to be able to put it all together, I think that's the key. This way you only have one voice in your ear and one person telling you the way things should be. And in my opinion, MMA fighters need to rely on more on one coach rather than so many different coaches. Yes, I do agree in, you know, maybe um, bringing in a boxing coach if you want to develop your hands, your head movement, but ultimately it comes back to your main coach who sees how that incorporates into the main system. I tell my guys all the time, yes, it's important that we, um, martial arts is a big concept. You can't constantly work everything every day. I can't come into training today and say, I'm gonna work my power, my speed, my boxing, my footwork, I'm gonna work my kicks and my flexibility. It's too much. So I'm big on periodizing in training. I periodize my strength training and I periodize my kickboxing with myself and my guys. So for example, I'll take out um, month blocks or uh, however long I determine just to work a certain skill. For example, Troy Sheridan, uh, my main fighter here, he now is working southpaw. He doesn't have a fight currently booked. So we're taking um, his left side and, and just focusing in in on his one of his weaker points which is his southpaw fighting and we're going to develop that so this way we're going to get that southpaw and put it into his overall pitcher but that's the way you fully develop it take it out of the main system work on it then put it back in so um, again having that one coach is very important to put it all together um, one of the main examples i can see uh, think of is faras zahabi He's able to put it all together. Um, great coach, and look at the success of George St. Pierre had in his career. Um, Greg Jackson, another great coach. Um, I would say maybe Winkle John. Um, I don't know too much about him, but from speaking to Joe Rogan and others in the community, I heard he's one of those coaches that can put it all together. So I think that's very important to have. Um, how do you cut water weight? How much can water weight um, affect uh, you in decreasing your performance come fight day. This is from Raman813. Um, I'll, I'll do a new video on weight cutting and my philosophy on weight cutting. It's, it's a lot more complicated and complex than, than people think. It's more than just dieting and cutting your water out. I'll do a whole video on the way I cut weight uh, for fights. But the general rule is um, you don't want to cut too much uh, weight. Um, I, I used to get 24 hours out, I used to put in, um, I used to cut about 10 pounds max. I always try to get 10 pounds the day before. A week out, maybe 12 pounds. But the key to proper weight cutting is doing your weight cut from when you hear the fight is announced. Don't wait to the last minute to cut your weight. If you have eight weeks to fight, you need to cut your weight eight weeks out so you maintain your energy uh, throughout your camp. Uh, from the science and the research that I've done uh, with my team, uh, especially my, one of my coaches, Costa Clarianos, he's um, my strength and conditioning coach as well. He really looked at the scientific side of it. Um, so we would study all the research and all the things that we had. And we determined that 10 to 12, 12 pounds max the day before would be the best weight cut. Um, I think there's a general, um, something along the lines of, I don't know, 
Um, I'm trying to think of what the formula was, one pound for every few hours or something like that. So we determined it was um, 10 pounds max, and I've always felt great before. But it's also important, which I'll add in that wake-up video, how do you replenish in order to get the best results? Um, how do you get the water back in properly? I've done the biggest mistake the first time I cut weight. I ended up shoving so much crap in my mouth and ended up feeling sick to the point where I couldn't even stand up straight. So I've learned throughout my career and I'll offer you guys my tips so you don't make the same mistakes. Uh, let me see. All right, this is my last question here. Could I do a video about conditioning your shins and uh, where to aim when you kick to avoid hitting elbows? Um, that's a very big loaded question, but shin conditioning comes from training. And I'm going to say it again, bag work, bag work, bag work. Fighters constantly are going to sit there and run 10K and then skip out on bag work. I'm the biggest believer in bag work over running. If you're hitting the bag constantly and you're putting in, you know, 10 rounds on the bag, you're constantly hitting shins, you're hitting different areas of your shin, different parts. So you're constantly strengthening your knees, your hands, your shins. Um, your elbows, even forearms. Sometimes I'll sit there and I'll hit my, even though I'm a kickboxer, I would hit my elbows just to strengthen up all the bones um, in my body and strengthening that armor. So constant repetition and sparring, bag work, pad work, that all um, you know, hardens your bones. Do I sit there and I roll my shins out? No, I don't do that. Um, I thought about it when I was younger, thought it was a cool thing, but I just realized it all comes from hard training, and a mentality. Once you fight for the first time with no shins, you're gonna realize it's not as bad as you think. Adrenaline is a great drug that you get where you don't feel it until after the fight. So once you throw that first kick in the fight, you'll realize it's not as bad as you think. Um, regarding where to kick, um, as my kickboxing technical series advances, I'm gonna show you. Uh, remember, a kick isn't just a kick. The main thing is you can throw your kicks at different angles. Um, the way you set it up affects um, if you hit elbows or not. For example, if you're going to kick the body, I like to set it up with straight punches, get the guard up, opens up the body underneath the elbow. Kicking more on a, on a 45 degree angle helps that. So as you learn my, my style, my system, uh, it'll become clear um, how to change and vary your kicks in order to not hit the elbow. It comes from strategy and fight IQ. Well, there you go. That's another question and answer. Again, thanks everybody for following, commenting, liking. I'm going to give a big shout out to the guys behind the camera, Danny and Brahim, DB Vault. Thank you guys for making this possible for everybody online. So make sure you guys give those guys some love. And yeah, see you guys soon. Make sure you follow the technical series.